Hello, this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo, and welcome back. We are uh, in the mouth now with an uncovered Biomed 3i broken screw retrieval case, and we've just pre-soaked for at least 20 minutes of tartar and stain remover. We're now going in with a 20-gauge uh, suction. It's a blunt end suction, so there's nothing sharp on the tip of this suction tip. And uh, we're perusing the area where hopefully we're going to have a loose screw here soon. So I'm uh, going to go in and test it, just making sure that we're getting rid of anything that might be folding over. You can see as time progresses, uh, that tissue likes to collapse a little bit. So I'm going to move things along. The patient's already been informed, uh, and we're uh, moving right now to, to proceed um, with bringing back the tartar and stain uh, tip, which is even smaller than that of the suction tip. I'm going to use that to test the screw head or the, the fragment now. What you'll see is a clockwise rotation on the video, and uh, which I'm doing a counterclockwise rotation in the mouth. So, just a very gentle um, test. Here we go, and I'm patients now uh, informed that uh, we got a loose screw, and the fragment is loose. So. Good news for the patient, he doesn't have to go through having the uh, implant trephined and removed and going through unnecessary uh, surgery to have a new implant placed. So good news for the patient. Uh, and so the next step is to get it completely out. So we're going to continue to rotate our screw fragment again with uh, without the, the patients, you know, you have to really have to relax a little bit while you're doing this. You really don't want to be too tense and just get the fragment out. Now with a small suction tip, I'll take that right out of there. You can see it's the gold-coated screw from uh, Biomet 3i and, um, and we'll just go ahead and get that out now. Easy enough when you pre-soak. That's the key. Okay, you can see the suction tip. Color-coded yellow for 20 gauge. Um, you just get the adapter for the suction and everything is, is pretty pretty easy to use. Um, we have the new screw ready to go in with the abutment. So here it comes out. You can see how small this is. Oh, there it goes. But That's why we have that little fishnet always put a 2x2 two two gauze underneath and you'll catch it every time in that net. If it went out it, it'll go down the patient's mouth, could go into the, uh, you know, down the wrong tube. So you got to make sure you're protecting your patient. And uh, here it is. So I'm looking at it and the patient's looking at it right now and uh, it's un incredible. That's something that small can get in the way. But with the proper techniques and, and what I've been showing video after video. We can get these small little fragments out without any problem. Just remember, do not go in there with any forceful instruments, not even a, a round burr or anything anything that's sharp on the end or even a blunt end. You have to pre-soak first. That's the key is to pre-soak your, your cases with tartar and stain. Look at the size of that. You can see that uh, I'm trying to examine to see if any of the gold flakes have come off, but uh, it seems like it's still intact. Uh, we still don't know why the screw did fracture. More than likely, it's it's the patient's bite, and uh, we'll check that at the end once we insert everything and go over if there's any movement whatsoever. So right now, the patient's uh, very, very happy. And, of course, now that the, the next steps are to scrub the threads as much as we can. So... Um, we do that with a, a simple micro brush to go in and just rotate it in the threads. Um, again, at this point, it's it's pretty straightforward. So in with the tartar and stain, I just drip it in there. I really don't want to get any of it outside that area. Let it penetrate. Um, I suppose you probably could try peroxide as well. Um, this seems to do the work for me, but... Um, I'll have to check with the companies on um, whether or not peroxide can even be used with titanium. So we'll see. Um, again, going in and just putting a little bit of tartar and stain in there very gently. You can see it's a color-coded blue, light blue uh, syringe tip. 
blunt end, nothing sharp. And um, right now it's just a matter of, of scrubbing. Maybe I can talk a little bit about the company uh, which was so supportive. I called them uh, oh, about 3, 4 o'clock uh, yesterday to have a screw uh, delivered from West Palm Beach to my office. And so we have that screw overnighted to the office, ready to go with the with the same specs as that of um, of what the patient presented. So uh, sometimes you can't identify the parts until the patient arrives in the office, and that's the hard part because then you have to reschedule them, to have them come back in. With our patient, we had him in the day before, and we were able to see him the day after. So. Um, Planning, pre-planning is important um, as much as you can. I'll, at times also, look at the size of that little screw fragment. Um, again, if you look real closely, uh, there's really nothing else I can see other than maybe some blood in there, uh, you know, with that well within the areas in between the threads. Um, but because, um, you know, it, it, it hasn't really... Um, you know, been trapped that long in there too, uh, and the good caution that the dentist uh, that that inspected the area first. He placed the cotton in there. He did everything right. Um, so keep in mind that uh, these cases are, are a lot easier uh, when you use a microscope and do not use any form of rotary instruments. Uh, just go in and and everything really should be just scrubbed by hand and soft bristles on the brushes no metal and uh, in in that brush whatsoever a little bit about the company again um, you know if you go to the websites you can actually look and, and check on um, you know, all the specs on on the abutment where where it has a, a lot of stability built into it um, again that 30 degree rotational capability that allows for you know, certainly improved aesthetics um, with this case. The um, the other thing is the um, you have that deep four millimeter internal engagement that helps as well. So you know, most companies are understanding that a lot of the stability comes with the abutment and how long it goes down to cover the actual screw. Where the abutment stops and where the threads pick up, that seems to be a an accident-prone area, not only in this company but other companies as well that I've seen. So, um, so what I try to do is, is just uh, you know analyze as much as I can and, and but not to say one particular thing caused the problem, uh, you know, obviously it, it, it could be uh, even from over tightening a screw. Uh, although sometimes there are cases where you tighten a screw and you, you think it's it's tightened all the way, but the contact is actually engaging a little tighter in between, and so the, there's some lateral forces being applied on the thread. So um, passive fit is important not only for larger cases like an all on four um, hybrid denture case fixed with implants and screws but also single single units um, here you can see how close um, or angle it is to the um, to tooth number four and that's also an implant and so you can see that the path of insertion right now um, as I'm examining it and and it is going through my mind as I'm scrubbing through here and trying to keep this as pristine and clean as I can. Um, I'll scrub as much as I can and look at the bristles to make sure that the uh, bristles are clean. Once they're spotless, I'll look in there again, rinse everything thoroughly, and then suction out um, any of the fluid. Um, you know, it's 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 going to be an, uh, a little bit of a... I would say a tight area on the distal of the crown because of the, just the way that uh, is angled in there. So I'll be checking that after hand tightening the implant abutment down inside 
with the new screw. Uh, definitely hand tightening. And um, as I said before, Biomet, uh, they do a really nice job of, of uh, being on the phone if you need them. They uh, they were instrumental on, on going over the protocol and, and we discussed it back and forth with Florence uh, in West Palm Beach. Uh, she's very good about uh, bringing up anything and everything that can can go right and go wrong in these cases. So uh, speak to the experts. That's what they're there for. Um, she's uh, easily uh, accessible. Um, there's also, you know, other places to, to check. Uh, there's, um, you know, Darwin. Certainly I can bring his name up because he's, you know, just been amazing and and helping with other implant cases. Um, the local management, um, also for 3i, Brent, who's been terrific um, and, and coming right to the office and and allowing me to have access to the uh, broken screw retrieval kit um, and to study it um, that we didn't have to use today. So that's good news. All right, so I'm just going to continue to scrub here. I'm going to pick this up on the next video clip, see if we can get closer and closer to putting the abutment back in place. I'll uh, let you know that if you have patients or any dentist or even dental students that, that have questions, please feel free to reach me at uh, www.gcuomodds.com or you can call me here at the office at 561 391 6290. Um, this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. Uh, hope to hear from you. Uh, comments are always welcome and uh, and uh, you can also subscribe to, uh, to my YouTube channel. All right. Take care and hope everybody has a great day out there. I'll pick it up on the next video's segment.